Hello, hello, hello. Let's put the sound down here on the phone. Good. <clears throat> hey, gang. I can't tell if I'm broadcasting. I'm going to proceed as though I am. Okay, so this is mostly dry. This is a really fun part. It's always fun to do the glazes. Now, you understand, you have to know what glaze means. It means transparent, transparent like glass. I, I emphasize that because when I'm teaching this class live, I always have a student or two or three in the class for some reason who don't, that concept doesn't come easy to them. So it's like transparent as cellophane, transparent as glass. That's what a glaze is. Glaze, glass. There's actually a similarity between those two words. Hey, Susan. Good. Must be broadcasting. Um, let me show you my subject matter again as much as I can. Ellie, get out of your way. That's it over there. You're seeing just a little bit of the, the porch of the house. Um, part of the reason that this, this, this step of the process is so fun is because you get to paint really outside the line. Like there, that's my red barn. You got it? Does that make sense? There's my red barn. And some of you would have to go through counseling <laughs> to be able <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm just teasing you. In order to paint that loosely. That, that is just so counter. And I understand that. I, it was to me too. My whole painting technique is a coping mechanism for how to get loose. Because I didn't used to be loose. And everything you see me doing, virtually everything you see me doing is... I have learned how to cope and compensate for not being naturally loose. Let's get some let's get some green in these trees up here. Now, some of you I said that was a good thing when I did the red all over the place and now I just did green all over the place. I could perhaps answer, why is that a good thing? Well, there's just part of the answer, just at least part of it, not the whole thing. Why is it a good thing to paint like a crazy man or woman and let your colors spill out all over the place, which is what you see me doing there? Why is that a good thing? Well, part of the reason is because of this little known, <laughs> I think, but desperately important law rule of painting it is that um, we human beings we like to see little bits of the object spill over into the background and little bits of the background spill over into the object now it's really funny because most of the time when I start talking about this kind of thing I use the word barn as a as an icon as a symbol <laughs> but ironically here today I actually am doing a barn. So I usually say, so you're, I've got a red barn against, set against a backdrop of dark green trees, right? What that means is we like to see little bits of the red that have somehow escaped into the trees and a little bit of the green trees that has escaped or in, in uh, forced itself into the uh, reality of the barn. Does that make sense? We, that, so that's a principle. That doesn't answer. That's not the whole reason why it's a good idea to paint messy. Uh, but that's that's a significant part of the the answer because that will serve that that will serve me well in the later stages of this painting process. I am having a tar hard time painting this small. I want a streak of light right here. So and I want it to be, if possible, I want it to be chartreuse yellow green yellow green chartreuse is not an arts artist color is it it's a decorator color but you probably knew what i meant so let's come in here with some green first of all while i'm doing green let's add some more green to these bushes in front of a house they got pretty much wiped out by purple and then let's try some yellow on top of this there we go that's pretty good there we go that's that streak of light that i want on the far side of this house and uh my colors keep running running away with me so 
I find I keep having to apply some colors over and over. There we go. That's a nice color. I like that. Okay, what next? Um, it's either draw some dark. Yeah, I think I'll do that. Or, or do white. But I think I'm going to draw with some smaller brushes now. Get some, get some dark details uh, nailed down. And then I'll do my last layer of white. And by the way, I, I apologize to those of you who got... I forgot that when I broadcast straight from my phone, which I was doing a while ago, I forgot that with every piece of my broadcast, you get a separate, you get a separate uh, notification, and that irritates people, of course, when they get too many notifications. And somebody just told me that I've just disappeared. Is that still the case? Anybody hearing me? Am I just talking to myself? That's a very, very distinct possibility. Am I am I here? Somebody send me a chat if you don't mind. Say yeah you're still on. If I don't hear from anybody then I'll strongly suspect that I am no longer broadcasting at all. Yeah, these shutters are uh, sort of a I don't know what color green, turquoise, pale turquoise. I, I, I don't like them that color, so I'm not going to do them that in my, in my uh, painting. But I do like them green-ish. So I'm going to go ahead and do the underpainting in a green color. Okay, just a little bit more some dark things here and there. Oh, I know, I need to get these trees dark. That would be good to have the trees dark. Am I broadcasting it all? Let me zoom in so you can just see the painting a little bit better. Let's do some dark. broadcasting can you guys see me I'm way out in the country so you know having signal strength is always an issue when you're way out in the middle of nowhere I'm not in the middle of nowhere I'm just on the edge of nowhere <laughs> I'm sure these poor people living in this house behind me wouldn't like to think that they're living nowhere <laughs> they're just on the edge of nowhere and they would probably agree with me about that Nobody's said anything yet, so I don't know if I'm broadcasting. If you can hear me, I'd appreciate somebody, anybody saying, yep, I'm brought, you're here. I can hear you. Say, I can hear you. That would help me a great deal. I can't force you to do anything, and it may be proof that I'm not broadcasting at all. In which case, I'm talking happily to myself, which is really good because I am one of my best friends. <laughs> Hey, hey, Matt's art stuff. Thank you. Um, looks like I am still broadcasting. I appreciate that. Matt, I don't know if you heard me or not. I was for several minutes there not sure if I was really on or not. Good to hear from you. Matt's art stuff. Very cool, man. So I, I entitled the beginning of this broadcast about an hour ago. I entitled it Real Plain Air Painting because unlike my normal, <laughs> I'm actually painting a fairly 
common size for plein air painters, 16 by 20. Of course, it's driving me crazy because I can't stand painting this small thing. <laughs> it's good for me. It is good for me to learn how to paint small. Okay, I think I'm going to take a minute and close up all of my water, all my acrylics, <laughs> water-based acrylics. And uh, some of somebody was asking me just the other day. Well, I get these containers. They're called Keeper Keeper Flexible Sealware. You can Google that and find out where you can get these. I just went in. There's a store in Raleigh called the Container Store. I believe it's a chain. And uh, I spent, you know, a considerable amount of time uh, finding, whoa, finding what containers would fit into the larger container because the, the fact that they're double boxed is very important to me. Um, okay, back to then painting. So I don't have to wait for this layer to dry. There's a lot of wet stuff on here, but I've discovered I don't have to wait to be before going ahead and coming in with the light, light stuff. Now let me start right here. First of all, I want you to know that once I had picked out this subject matter, this barn, this house, this barn, and this farm scene, um, you know, I walked around for a few minutes looking for an angle, and it is this point right here. It was the the roof, the roof over the porch, silhouetted against the light sky. In other words, the sky comes all the way down to there, which establishes my horizon, of course, is nice and low right there. Um, it was this, that's the kind of thing my eye looks for. In other words, if I had walked that way a little bit and the, the end of this roof ended in these dark trees, it would diminish the impact of this shape. It would not be as strong graphically as it is when I've got this this triangle in in against silhouetted against the uh, light sky. Now you understand, don't you, that just because I'm painting this sky white right now, by no means does that suggest or indicate that it's going to stay white. It is it is it will be light with an L, but it will not be white with a W H. And uh, Again, sometimes my students, some of them have a hard time going, oh, you don't just paint things that are white at this stage. No, no, no. You paint things that are light in value. Of course, down here, it's going to be it's going to be very close to white, but still, not quite. It's the color of the sky. By the way, if you paint from photographs, and every time I go out plain air painting, of course, I take any number of photographs, not only of the scene that I'm painting, but uh, of views in, around here that I am not painting because that builds up my library of paintable images, right? That makes sense, right? You with me? And um, remember, however, unless you're using a Pro HDR or HDR Pro, then when you get back and look at your pictures, the sky is going to be blasted out white, light, white. And that is, don't copy. Well, that's one of the easiest things to mess up when you're painting from a photograph. The, in your photograph, the sky is often what is called blown out. That is, it just turned completely white. But don't do that in your painting. You have the capacity. Now, just a word about Pro HDR. One of the best apps that I've ever paid for. My you know, a whopping two ninety nine or three or two or three or four dollars, something like that, for Pro HDR. Um, if you have an either an iPhone or a Droid, <laughs> which is most everybody that has a smartphone has either an iPhone or Droid, um, you might be saying to me, "Oh, oh, yeah, no, 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 my phone, my phone has HDR already built in." No, it does not. That is a fake HDR. Don't believe it. It's an artificial. It does not work well it's it's okay it's not a bad setting but it's not real hdr real hdr literally isn't hdr unless it takes literally three separate photographs and then merges them together so don't be fooled by your clever marketing by your droid and um it used to be just the iphone people had the fake hdr now the iphone now the iphone and the droid people both have fake hdr on their phones so like i said 
don't be tricked by that little bit of marketing sleight of hand. It is not real. It's okay, but it's not real HDL. So you're going to have to break, spend the big bucks. $3, I think, $2.99. Maybe $3.99, I'm not sure. You're just going to have to spring. <laughs> I love it. Don't you love you can buy apps? I mean, so many apps are free, of course. That's great. But oh, my goodness, paying $3 for an app that you're really going to use? What a deal. I like this new world, really. <laughs> there's a whole, there's a whole, there's a, a whole bunch. From standing right here, by the way, you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight barn-like structures in here, and I'm only going to render one, two, three, four. So half of them I am eliminating from my from my painting. It just it gets too, too, too busy if I try to do them all. Having fun right now doing sky holes that really are sky holes. Many times my sky holes are not sky holes at all, but building holes and wall holes and goodness knows what all. Um, but at the moment I'm doing real sky holes and this will not be the last time. It's not be my last whack. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back and do sky holes again, of course, in the in the later stages of the painting, in the oil painting stage. One of the nice things, one of the bad things about painting with acrylics is they tend to dry uh, translucent. That is lighter than you put them down, okay? Or, or le less opaque. So that, that can be irritating if, when you, when, if you're new to acrylics and you put them down and they, they look like they're nice and opaque and then as, the, as it dries, it becomes more and more transparent, ending up with something that, of course, is translucent, right in between, you know, fake and transparent. Um, so that's irritating. On the other hand, well, let's put a little, just a little bow in this roof, make it look a little bit more old and authentic. There is no bow in that, the barn I'm looking at in reality, it's, looks pretty new because the roof, the ridge, ridge, ridge line is nice and straight as far as I can tell. But I'm going to put a little bow in it just to make it get a little more character. Um, I interrupted, interrupted myself. I was talking about something else, wasn't I? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But once you discover that, uh, that uh, acrylics dry translucent, then you can actually use that, that feature to your advantage as, as I am doing here. Like right now, it looks like I'm destroying, covering up my uh, all that nice orange red stuff that I painted on a while ago, but in a minute that's going to dry a little bit more transparent and some of the red will peek through. Not all, but some. So that's a I'm just using the medium to my advantage instead of instead of getting irritated that it doesn't stay opaque. Just know that it doesn't stay opaque and then use that characteristic to your advantage. I think that is in fact I think the essence of watercolor painting. I mean watercolor painting is the most irritating. <laughs> if you're if you if you want your watercolors to do what you tell them, you know, you're set up for real disappointment because they have a mind of their own. But a good watercolor painter knows how to take advantage of all those little idiosyncrasies of uh, of watercolor painting and uh, use them to his or her advantage instead of being irritated. It sounds like the voice of experience, one who has been irritated, right? Yes. <sighs> Once again, um, if you weren't here earlier, I am anticipating, predicting, expecting, uh, guessing what the light effects will be uh, in this in this setting you know in a couple of hours even though I don't expect to be here in a couple hours so if I were then I could test my work but I probably won't be here that long I'm doing a small painting hope to knock it out fairly quickly today get home and get working on something else so I, I won't be here when the sun is down so far that this is all in shade and there's a shaft of light through here but I'm pretty comfortable 
saying, yeah, that's what it's going to look like. This is what it's going to look like. And I feel like this, this shaft of light along here is a pretty important um, element in, in my composition. I, can you see my hand? I'm used doing this with my left hand, by the way, because actually, ironically, my left hand does vertical lines better than my right hand, which is very, very peculiar. I'm still very much right-handed, but my left hand does does vertical marks better. Anyway, do you see how my hand is shaking and jittery and and not not in control? Um, and that that drives beginners and students drives them crazy because they want their hand to behave and to, to hold still and to you know make the lines that they tell it to make as I like to say stop fighting your hand it is it is doing its dead level best to make you a good painter then you're fighting against it by gritting your teeth and and ch choking up on the brush like this no 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 let it let it jitter at least till the very last at least till the final edit phase but even then even then you uh you don't fight against it that the, the time will come when you will be able to draw a straight line listen to me this is a joke it's not very funny but it's true the day will come when you will draw a straight line it's called flat line <laughs> should you have the blessing of dying in a hospital one day your little machine will go and you will draw a flat line for the rest of eternity. <laughs> and um, sorry to joke if somebody was just experienced that with a loved one in the hospital. So forgive me for my crude humor. But um, we're all going that way. Um, now, I happen to think, can't prove it, but I happen to think there's more after this life than just this life. But be that as it may, I don't want you to hang up on me because you think I'm some medieval metaphysical freak so we'll just leave that right there shall we <laughs> uh, well, I should have scratched that while I had the chance I still got a little bit of scratch out of it there are a few tree trunks way back here Yeah, let's do a little bit more sky holes. Shape the, carve out the shape of these trees. Okay, this is my last, uh, I believe, I think it's my last uh, layer of acrylics. I'm gonna move to oil shortly. And uh, happiness is getting to this point in the painting process and feeling like your colors and your values are really close to their final destination and that is the way I feel right now today and that's a always a nice nice feeling because that means that the, the over painting the final edit in particular will be much easier because because the underpainting is fairly close to finish. Decided to put a fascia board. It's called a fascia. On this barn. In spite of the fact that there is not a fascia on it in real life. Nor are there these whatever you call them, the end of the that's not realistic either, but I like it better than what's there, so.
that I had that too sharp, sharp edged, didn't I? That can be really soft. In fact, let's go ahead and do a little bit of fuzz right here before we leave this. Okay, I am done with the acrylics. And I think I can take a quick break here without starting a new broadcast. I believe that's correct. Oh, good. My sound is clear. That's a nice change, isn't it? Glad to hear it. Thank you, David. Okay, quick break. Uh, long enough to get my acrylics out of here, get in my oil paints all set up, and I'll be back. Hopefully